Hi everyone, Zach Weinert here for CGBoost.com and in this video I show you how you can easily mirror complex 3D models in Blender, which consists out of multiple objects. This is especially useful when you are in the blocking and modeling phase of your 3D model. Before we get started, did you know that you can sign up to our free resource section at cgboost.com slash resources? This includes our regular updated Blender shortcut PDF with all the most important shortcuts for Blender, our Blender introduction course and other resources. It's completely free, however you need an email to sign up and the link is down below in the video description. All right, here we can see this flying vehicle I'm currently working on. And if I enable the random viewport color, you can see it consists out of many different objects indicated by the different colors here. Now, since most of the parts should also be mirrored to the other side, of course, we don't want to model one side and then model the other side. We are using a mirror modifier. Everything which is lying directly here on the mirroring axis can of course be just mirrored using the mirror modifier. We just have to make sure that the origin of the object is directly lying on the mirroring axis. So this is how it works and everybody knows that. However, we also have a bunch of objects here which are not lying directly at the mirroring axis and the origin is somewhere here. That means if I now add the mirror modifier, it will be mirrored directly here on the origin and it doesn't appear here on this side where it should be. What we could try to do is to enable the move gizmo up here under options enable origins. This allows us to now move the origin without moving the object. Now we could eyeball this, we could try to press N and change the X location to zero, but then the object is also moving and it isn't a perfect workflow. Now also if I try to quickly move this object or rotate this object, you can see the other side is moving along and it's basically not usable. So let's undo this because there's a better workflow. First of all, make sure that the 3D cursor is in the center. If it's not, if it's somewhere here, simply press Shift S and then click on Cursor to World Origin. Then up here, make sure that the right collection is selected where you wanna place the new object in and then hit Shift A, go to empty and maybe let's add an arrows empty but you can use whatever you like. So let's use this one. And by the way, an empty object will not be rendered later on. So, and this should be now directly in the center because this is now defining our mirroring axis. And now we can simply select this object, go to the modifiers, add a mod modifier, mirror, and instead of using the default setting here with the origin as mirroring axis, we are changing the mirror object. Up here, let's name this empty object mirror, so we better know what it is. And now on this object in the modifier settings, we can add a mirror object. Let's click in here, type in M, then the mirror should be listed here. Let's pick this up and now you can see it's perfectly mirrored on the other side. And the cool thing is it fully ignores the different axes of this specific object because it is using the axis of this empty object. That means I could even rotate this or if I change the axis over here, it's also using the specific axis of this empty object. That means since it is now in the right place, it is using the X axis, I just have to add the mirror modifier. I don't need to change any settings except adding the mirror object. And to make the workflow even quicker, let's click on add modifier, right click on the mirror modifier and click on add to quick favorites. That means if I, for example, want to add the mirror modifier to this object, select this, press Q to open up the quick favorites, click on mirror, then this will be added. And now all we need to do is to add the mirroring axis over here under mirror object. Same over here, quickly done as you can see. And if you have other objects which are using the exact same modifiers, you can even copy the modifiers. So this one here now has the mirror modifier on it, this one not. So let's select this one first, then this one, press Control L to open up the Make Links menu and then click on Modifiers. Then we copied the modifier from the last selected object to the previous selected objects. Same thing let's do over here and same thing over here. And now this is mirrored to the other side and works perfectly. And the same thing I did for all the objects down here. And now the cool thing is we can move this around we can rotate this and it's using the origin of the specific object. That means we could even move the origin around for this object. Like so, for example, if we want to change how it will rotate, let's disable this once again. And this works perfectly fine. Now, for example, here, I also have used the same method. I can simply duplicate this and the modifiers will stay intact. And then I can simply put this object into a different place here 
like here for example. Or I could even start to change this object and model something else out of it. So I don't even need to add a new modifier. So and this makes the modeling process super easy and fast because now we can, for example, add a new object because we want to add this crazy cube to this one here. Press Q, add the mirror modifier, add the mirror object. And now I can simply continue working on my object, change anything here. And this will be perfectly placed on the other side as well. So we have our mirroring object here and I now mirrored everything to the other side, which I need to. And now let's imagine we are done with modeling this vehicle here. Now after texturing and all this stuff, we might want to rig and animate this object. So how do we proceed with all these mirrored objects? Of course, if you have static objects here, which won't move at all, you can either apply the mirror modifier by clicking on this arrow and click on apply or simply hovering the mouse above the modifier and press control A. Then this is applied and it works perfectly. Or a different workflow, let's hit Shift S cursor to world origin and let's add another empty object like a cube for example. We could also select everything and make sure that this cube is selected last. Then let's press Ctrl P to open up the set parent menu and then let's click on object, keep transform. And now we parent everything to this cube empty. That means also this mirroring axis is parented. And now we can move this cube and everything is moving along with it. So we could even leave all the mirror modifiers enabled. However, as you can see, since all the modifiers need to be updated all the time, this runs really slow. So let's undo all that because there is a better workflow. Let's select this object here and first of all, let's remove the mirror modifier. Same for these objects here and same here. Now let's select all of these three objects that belong to the ring here. And then instead of Shift D, I press Alt D, which creates a linked duplicate. That means all the meshes from these objects are linked with each other. That means these two are linked, these two are linked and these two are linked. That means if I go into edit mode and change anything here, you can see this will also affect the other one because both objects are now using the exact same mesh. However, as you can see in object mode, I can freely move this around, scale this and rotate this. So let's undo this once again, because after I press Alt D, make sure to press right click or escape. So the duplicates are jumping back to the original position down here. And now we can mirror this to the other side. First of all, make sure that the 3D cursor is here in the center. If not, again, press Shift S cursor to world origin. Then make sure that the pivot point is set to 3D cursor. So our transform gizmo will appear on the 3D cursor. And now with all the duplicates still selected, press Ctrl M to start the mirroring operation. And now we can press X, Y or Z to mirror along a specific axis. And in this case, of course, it is the X axis. Press enter and now we have mirrored this to the other side. That means let's select all these three objects. Let's set the pivot point to active. So the gizmo will show up on the last selected object. And now if I, for example, quickly rotate this, you can see it is now moving independently from the other side. However, I can still go in here and change the model and this will still affect the other side, which is pretty cool. And now you can parent these objects together so that everything works nicely if you want to animate this object and you shouldn't have any big troubles. However, if at some point you want to change this object here independently from the other one, you have to unlink this. And you can easily do this by selecting the object, go to object, relations, make single user and click on object and data or simply press F3 to open up the search menu and search for make single user and then click on make single user object and data. Now we unlink these two objects and now I can go to edit mode, change anything here and this won't affect the other object on the other side. One little side note here, if I press N you can see from this object which I mirror to the other side, the scale is now now negative one. And if you want to apply the scale, you can of course do this, press Ctrl A, click on apply scale. Now this is all set back to 111. However, if we do that, let's enable face orientation here, the normals of this object will be flipped. That means you have to go to edit mode, select everything and press Shift N. Also in this regard, if you have linked objects like this one here and you want to apply the scale, press Ctrl A, this doesn't work because it's just not working for linked objects. So that means you have to make this a single user first then apply the scale and then flip the normals. However, then of course, these objects are not linked anymore. Yeah, and this should give you enough information on mirroring complex objects. 
Yeah, I hope you find this video useful and learned something new. If so, like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. And if you want to learn more modeling tricks, check out my 100 modeling tips video for Blender. Link is also down below in the video description. By the way, if you're new to Blender or just want to learn Blender properly and professionally, check out our comprehensive courses at academy.ctboost.com, like for example our Blender Launchpad course that teaches you everything you need to know to get started with Blender, and it will teach you step by step on how to create a beautiful animated 3D scene from scratch without any previous knowledge. This course has a rating of 4.9 out of 5 stars based on over 300 student reviews. Also, you can join our CG artist community at community.cgboost.com or practice in our monthly art challenges at cgboost.com slash challenge. Here you can level up your 3D skills and win great prizes. So see you around. Thanks a lot for watching guys and I will see you in one of my next videos. Goodbye.